We've recently gone from having relatively little information regarding Gran Turismo 7 to in a very short span of time over the previous couple of weeks, having an absolutely massive influx of new information about the game, such as the release date, new vehicles, of course brought on mostly by the second major trailer, after that first one that we had a long time ago now, loads of new details, loads of new features, and within, again, that very short span of time, already being able to pre-order the game for that proposed March release. So, as I've done videos before, especially in the Beards and Cars podcast series, where we can have a discussion between myself in the video and then you down in the comments, that's what we're going to do again. Because there are certain people, people who probably don't follow most of the stuff I do on the channel, who think that I just hate on Gran Turismo or hate on Polyphony, because that tends to be the only videos of mine that they watch, where I do criticise certain things. But this is the other side of that coin, because I've done videos before to measure the pulse of the community and to register what do you currently feel based on the information we have about Gran Turismo's future or present, be it GT6, GT Sport, or now GT7. So, in much more of a positive sense, I now want to bring that taking of the pulse back. For you and I to take a second, review everything we know, everything we expect, all the expectations and realistic or otherwise that we may have, and to take stock of how do you currently feel about Gran Turismo 7. Do you feel more excited than you were? Do you perhaps feel less excited, or are you about the same? Now, of course, I'm going to put my thoughts out there, and then you can compare these to your own and slap them down in the comments and get some healthy discussions going between ourselves. But for me, I would say it's actually been a very, very positive couple of weeks on the whole. There have been one or two things that certain people weren't happy with. Of course, you always have the contingent of people who are like, oh, I didn't see this car in the trailer, or I didn't see this track in the trailer, I'm disappointed because of that. I am glad to say, though, there does seem to have been a lot less of that than there usually would be. And I think part of the reason why is because we've had such a long dry spell, so people are really grateful to have any kind of new information. But beyond that... The most common concerns and critiques that I've seen recurring about Gran Turismo 7 and the new news and the new content is either people who don't believe it's going to reach that date, which, again, that's fairly minimal, and mostly, by far the biggest concerns that people have had, have been that it's both a cross-generation game between the PS4 and the PS5, and perhaps even more of a concern that people have had than that has been the fact that you have to have an online-only save, much like GT Sport. Now, those are the two by far biggest negatives that I've seen people discussing. And you can understand where those people are coming from on both counts. I am actually far more concerned about the cross-generation aspect, because to me... I don't fully understand why people are complaining about the save, you know, online only saving. I get it in principle, but I'm assuming that a lot of those people maybe didn't play GT Sport because that is the exact same method that that game used. And for the most part, I personally never had any issues with it. Now, again, I'm sure that that comes down to certain people having horrendous saving issues or bad internet connection problems. So that could very well affect any of us at any time. And I did have certain days where I wasn't able to save the game or where it wouldn't connect. Thankfully, it never affected me that badly. It wasn't like I'd just finished a 24-hour race and then it wouldn't save or something like that. So I could certainly see why that would affect some people, now that I say that out loud. But at the same time, as I said, to me, the PS4 and PS5 crossover is far more of a, a glaring potential issue. Because releasing it on PS5 justifies the wait time, justifies the gestation period and the development period of the game. All new Gran Turismo games on new platforms take longer than their previous ones. That's just a known fact. Even if you look back to Gran Turismo 5, if I recall correctly, there were some significant delays, or if nothing else, a big gap between Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo 5. So that alone wouldn't bother me. You know, that would almost be justified given how much more powerful the PS5 is, given the fact that Gran Turismo has always tried to be the class leader when it comes to stuff like graphics and realism, at least from the visual perspective. And I think, honestly, as much as I love Forza, even I have to admit, as a fan of both, 
and they've both had a huge part in my upbringing and my love for cars and gaming, I will easily give the win to Gran Turismo when it comes to graphics. Without question, and I say that as a huge fan of Forza. So, once again, you want that to be the case. That has always been one of the benchmarks of Gran Turismo. Back in Gran Turismo 1 and 2, where you had reflections on cars. Gran Turismo 3 looked amazing for the time on the PS2 as a debut game. Gran Turismo 4, in my opinion, still looks fantastic for its age and for its console. And obviously Polyphony thought so too, because they used a load of the models in that game, even as recently as Gran Turismo 6, with relatively minor updates to the graphics. So, in many ways, Gran Turismo's always been ahead of the curve when it comes to stuff like graphics, and GT Sport looks fantastic as well. In fact, I would argue that Gran Turismo Sport is possibly the first time in Gran Turismo's history where you can take a photo within a game and you could actually legitimately fool someone into thinking that it's a real photo. And of course, part of that is kind of a cheat, because the photos themselves are real, it's just that the car is in effect, superimposed onto the background, but still, it's a a fictional vehicle, and if anything, you would think that putting a, a digital component onto a real photo would make it glaringly obvious. So in that sense, they actually did an astoundingly good job, and that, as we've seen, is going to be carried over into GT7. The graphics are really good. The lighting, the textures, the details. And of course, most of those improvements can be seen when you take a closer look at the cars. Most cars look really good from a distance, but it's when you get really up close and start to see the polygons (laughs) where sometimes it can fall apart. So, from that perspective, of course the PS5 gives so much to offer. The PS4 contingency is what brings a little bit of concern, (laughs) understandably so, to that. Now, I did a video just about that being confirmed, and then we talked about it again after the trailer had dropped. And it's great to see so many people on the channel actually watching those videos. You know, it's nice for a change for YouTube to actually show people my content, not like it usually does, where less than 1% of the channel actually sees my videos. But, with that being the case, having something on PS5 and PS4, it naturally begs certain questions. And for all of the answers which Kaz gave, and again, for those who didn't see it, I did a video about Kaz's interview, wherein he did touch on the fact that it's going to be cross-generation, I don't think his answer was really sufficient enough for many people. And he has since clarified it a little bit further, but he still essentially had thoughts to the effect of that they're both going to be the same game, with the same content, just that the PS5 is faster, and of course has a graphics advantage. Now, he didn't say that the first time. He said about it being faster with better loading times, he didn't mention the graphics. He has since alluded to that. And of course you've got to allude to that, because otherwise what the hell would be the point of even having it on a PS5 as a a debut title? If it already looks the same on a PS4, then that begs the question of why the game would even exist on the PS5 in effect. So, to me... Having it on both, as I've mentioned before, has some great upsides and some great downsides, or potential downsides, let's say. The biggest potential downside is that by releasing it on both platforms, they neuter its potential in order to allow it to reach some of its potential on both. And the only way around that is by having a 100% version on the PS5 and a pared down 70-80% capability version in many ways, maybe even less actual content on the PS4. Now, they're claiming that they've gotten around that and that they are producing a a full-on quality experience on both. That, of course, remains to be seen, and when it comes to the pre-order, I am, at least off the top of my head, going to be pre-ordering probably, or at least ordering on the day, you know, whatever, the version of the game which gives you the PS5 and the PS4 version, because I don't want to buy both separately. But of course, in my position as a reviewer and as a gamer on YouTube, not just a private player, I do have to take certain things into account that many consumers don't. So for example, if you own a PS4 and you have no intention of getting a PS5, well then you have no reason to buy the PS5 version, so that makes it nice and simple for you. If you own the PS5, chances are you probably wouldn't care to have the PS4 version, because what would be the point of you owning the new console? Me, on the other hand, and others like me on YouTube, will 
we are probably going to be producing content about the differences between the two. And is it justified in having that PS4 version, etc, etc. So I most likely will be playing it on both. Now, if the game saves are shared between both consoles, that will help me out immeasurably. <laughs> because playing through every race twice will be a drag. So hopefully you can transfer the save data over the cloud or whatever. So I, I hope that you can do that. That will certainly make it simpler from my point of view as a content creator. Now, the potential upsides of that PS4 version, I believe, should not be discounted. Because it's easy to overlook it and just think of this as a bad thing. But there are two major advantages. One of them is completely commercial, and one of them is actually really wholesome. Now, honestly, I think that the wholesome aspect probably accounted for maybe 10% of Polyphony's decision to do it, and 90% is the commercial side. Because at the end of the day, they're a business, so you can expect them to have ethics and, you know, fair game at the top of their agenda. But those two reasons are, number one, it's better for business. And of course, as I said, that is the major reason. And the simple reason why it's better for business is because loads of people don't have a PS5 either because they can't afford one, if they're a, for example, younger person especially, or they just can't find one. I could have already purchased one or tried to purchase one myself, but I decided not to even try until I actually needed one, which will be closer to the time, probably even in the new year after Christmas. So, with that in mind, of course it makes sense from a business perspective, because you'll have so many people who still play GT Sports, still have a PS4, whatever, or a PS4 Pro, who can just immediately go out and download Gran Turismo 7 without even needing a new console. That's a fantastic business move, because you are going to sell hundreds of thousands of copies on the PS4. In fact... I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that I suspect Gran Turismo 7 will be a better seller on the PS4 than it will on the PS5. I believe they will sell more copies because more people have PS4s than PS5s, at least if I'm not mistaken. Now, the secondary reason ties into that, but it's actually more wholesome, and that is that as I just mentioned, some people can't afford a PS5, some people just can't find a PS5, and some people, just out of principle, don't want a PS5. But they may still be Gran Turismo fans. That is great news for them, because if the game is at least 80 or 90% as good as the PS5 version, conservatively speaking, well then that's great, because it means those people can still have at least most of the experience. And let's be honest here, let's take off the, you know, um, the hysteria hats for a moment, take a chill pill, and look at this objectively. When you think of PS4 versus PS5, it's easy to think, oh no, there's going to be a massive graphics difference, it's going to be a worthless game in comparison to the PS5. Stop for a second, boot up your copy of Gran Turismo Sport, and take a look at that game. It looks incredible. It looks phenomenal on the PS4. So let's not act like they can't make Gran Turismo 7 look absolutely stunning, even on a PS4, or a PS4 Pro even more so. Now, again, of course the PS5 will look that much better, but it's not like you're comparing Gran Turismo 5 to Gran Turismo 2, so let's not act like that's going to be the difference here. So I believe that from that perspective, it's potentially a great thing for those people who will get the chance to play it either at all or that much sooner because of that choice. So regardless of it being, of course, a heartless business decision at the end of the day, I do partially support them for it because I think that is a nice thought, at least, or at least a nice afterthought, let's say, for those people who will directly benefit from that choice. So for me, those two major issues which people seem to be having, they don't bother me as much. And I think that for a lot of us, if you actually stop and think about some of the stuff that I just said, and maybe even other things that you've thought of as well, they're actually not as huge problems as we could initially think. This is an end-of-the-world stuff here. It's still going to be a good game. It's just not going to be quite as good as the PS5. And yes, it will be online saving only, but if you've been playing GT Sport at all, that's really nothing new. So, if that's the worst we can currently come up with, 
then it could be a lot worse, especially with Gran Turismo's patchy track record of delaying games and GT Sport not fulfilling what many of us wanted, etc. So, of course, a lot of that remains to be seen when we actually play the game. And another potential concern that I've seen people bring up was also from Kaz's interview, and I'd actually forgotten about this one until just now. But some people had, I would say, fairly legitimate concerns about stuff like the new PS5 controller setup supposedly making the game more precise, as precise as a steering wheel, in fact, and also more so the quoted change in physics to make the game more accessible or more, I believe, more forgiving was the wording he used. It was something like that. Some people were justifiably concerned about that, because certain people do want the hardcore sim esports experience. They just play on a wheel, no aids, no traction control, no ABS, none of that. They dial in all the settings for their wheel, and they have dreams and goals of one day being one of those kids up on stage with their you know, red Gran Turismo gloves on, representing their country. So, for those people, I get it. For me, you already know how much that bothers me, and it's Precisely zero, (laughs) because at the end of the day, despite all the content that I do, I play games first and foremost to have fun, and if a game is fun, that is to me infinitely more impressive than if a game is just realistic. I've played realistic games, and honestly, they bore me very quickly, and I know that my circumstances are different. Many of, especially the younger people who are obsessed with making these games as realistic as possible, let's be honest, don't have the chance to drive real cars that much, if at all. So because of the other content that I do here on YouTube, wherein I do drive real cars, often really cool cars, such as the ones that we find in games like Gran Turismo and Forza, my appetite for the game needing to be as accurate as when I physically sit in a Nissan GTR or a Porsche 911 or a Ferrari, it just isn't there for me. I already do that, so I don't need the game to even come close to that. I want it to be fun first, and realistic second. And even when we talk about realism, at least for my taste in gaming, the graphics have always been number one. Far more than the physics, in fact. I can honestly boot up Driver San Francisco today or Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition and have a ton of fun. They're not realistic in the slightest for the most part, but they're super fun. And that will keep me much more interested than something like a Project Cars or an Assetto Corsa. There's a huge market for those, and as I said, a lot of people do love them. But not so much for me. It's not as high of a priority. However, to acknowledge those concerns that certain people have, I do agree with you from a certain perspective. And that perspective is this. You now know what the rest of us felt like with GT Sport. It doesn't feel good, does it? When somebody makes a certain type of game for literally decades and then suddenly switches on a dime, produces something completely different, that is almost 100% geared toward esports and realistic physics, and taking itself super seriously to the point where it reaches the Olympics as an official sport, when that was never anything to do with Gran Turismo before. So now that Kaz is somewhat backpedaling, at least in his comments, and saying that we're going to be making GT7 a little bit more traditional, a little bit more forgiving, Well, now you people know what we felt like with GT Sport. So, I wish I could say that I (laughs) sympathised, but I honestly don't, because at least now some of those people might begin to understand that it's actually not cool when someone sets a precedent and then flips it on its head without telling you, because that's exactly what Kaz did and what Polyphony did with GT Sport. It was nothing like GT6 in really any way apart from its name, or any of the previous titles for that matter, and by going back to this way in GT7, he's actually not doing anything close to what he did with GT Sport, because it just sounds like he's going back to like a GT4, 5, 6 situation, so it's actually more traditional than GT Sport ever was. So, from that perspective, I hear you, I understand the concerns, but part of me has a little bit of a a sneaky grin (laughs) about that happening. So those are my overall condensed thoughts, at least as far as the concerns go. I would love to hear yours down below. Do you perhaps disagree with something I've said? I mean, doubtless somebody will, it's the internet. But if you do disagree, provide reasons why. 
because that's always far more beneficial. Maybe you could even change my mind about something. If you just say, no, you're an idiot, I disagree, blah, 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 well, then why should I listen to that comment for a second? Chances are it will just be deleted. If, however, you can back up those thoughts with actual logic, spoken in a, an intelligent way, then, of course, I will read it and potentially even have my mind changed. I certainly have in the past. Plenty of people have made plenty of suggestions about the channel, a lot of which I've implemented, and they have improved things. So it does work, and I do listen when the critique is valid. So tell me your thoughts down below about the critiques which I mentioned that certain people are having, certain worries, maybe even something extra that you think I might have overlooked or forgotten, or maybe just something which you have as a concern about the game. Tell me that down below. And also in general, as I mentioned at the start of the video, what is your pulse when it comes to this game? Do you feel more excited, less excited, about the same perhaps? Do you have new concerns? Maybe have some of your initial concerns been alleviated? Let me know down below. And of course, check out the other Gran Turismo 7 breakdown stuff which I've done. We really got in depth on that trailer and into Kaz's interview, etc. And of course, stick around on the channel for more content in future. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.